Hey everyone, Sontad here, and welcome back to our Rune Factory 4 crafting series. Uh, in this one, we'll be talking all about shoes, uh, and how you can make the best shoes in the game, and the coolest looking ones, maybe. Uh, we aren't sponsored or anything. Uh, anyway, so basically, in this video, for the in this video, first we'll talk about normal crafting, so the stuff we've spoken about until now, so things like headgear, or shields, or armor. And then we'll talk about why shoes and accessories are different, and why we need to think about different things when we're making those. In particular, we're going to talk about the unique shoe abilities. Uh, we're going to go through every single one of them, uh, because I don't think that's something that has really been documented before, so I thought I'd just go through that one by one. And then I will give my final recommendations for the best shoes in the game, and how to make them. So yeah, uh, let's get straight to it. So first off, um, quick summary of the last few videos. Basically, we can craft materials, craft equipment, and put different materials inside it. And you can use up to three items when we're crafting to grant their full effect. Uh, we can also upgrade with up to nine items, and then we can also change an equipment's appearance. Uh, so a good example of this, which we're gonna do briefly, um, is we're gonna try and make an umbrella. Um, so an umbrella gives magic defense. And let's say we don't like how it looks though, so we're gonna put make it look like a small shield. Uh, all we want to do is we can put the umbrella, uh, which has the stats we want, into a small shield, which has the appearance we want. And that way we can make our small shield with the stats of an umbrella. So this small shield gives us magic defense, like the umbrella would. Uh, we're going to talk to Barrett just to make sure everything is fine. Please check my gear. And he will say that it looks like a small shield, but it has the abilities of an umbrella. So yeah, so that's all good. So that's how it normally is. However, with shoes, it's a bit different. Uh, so let's do something different. Let's say we like, um, let's say we like these pure sandals. So these pure sandals uh, give really nice love resistance and dizzy resistance and dizzy. Uh, it also says in its description that um, it chirps with every step, which is pretty funny. So if we equip those uh, and we walk, yeah, you can hear that annoying chirp. But anyway, yeah, so let's say we like the stats of those pure sandals, but we don't like how it looks. So instead, let's try and make it look like some leather boots or something. Uh, let's try and make it look like secret boots, I guess. So we're going to try and make the secret boots. We're going to put the pure sandals in those secret boots. The yeah, secret boots. And then we're going to check them. And we're going to see here that the secret shoes actually still only give 12 defense. They don't give that love resistance or the dizzy resistance. Uh, so let's walk around and, huh. So we still get that sound. Um, let's talk to Barrett and let's see what Barrett says. And Barrett says that it looks like pure sandals was used in making this. He should say were used to be grammatically correct, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's something very different for shoes. That's the same deal for accessories. Um, so basically, shoes and accessories can grant things that aren't just stats, okay? Um, so things like pure sandals is annoying chirp sound is an extra effect, a bonus ability is what I'm going to call it. Um, and using shoes or accessories when you craft other shoes or accessories imbues those extra abilities. So since we use those pure sandals when making these secret shoes, we get the abilities of those pure sandals. Um, so this means we can use up to four different abilities on the same equipment piece. So we can get three from crafting, we can get one more from the thing itself. So in this case, I have secret shoes, so I still have the actual effect of the secret shoes. Um, unfortunately, this does mean we can't change the appearance of those shoes or accessories. So our secret shoes will always look like secret shoes, have the stats of secret shoes, and have the abilities of secret, secret shoes. Uh, so in a visual form, uh, so this was the diagram we used before for everything else. We're basically on top in yellow, we have everything we put in to our equipment. And on the bottom in green, we have everything we get out. So we put in recipe, uh, extra materials, other equipment, and upgrade materials. And we get out things like the appearance, base fats, some extra crafting effects, and some extra upgrade effects. With shoes, it's more complicated because we also have this new extra abilities thing. And the extra abilities are given by the recipe materials, the additional equipment, as well as any additional equipment in the old additional equipment. So it does uh, pass on through multiple generations, I guess, in that way. Um, so 
this is pretty complicated. Uh, to make it slightly simpler, um, I'm gonna do it like this. Basically, for the most part, for shoes and accessories, we're gonna try and ignore the crafting effects. Um, the reason being that crafting effects is something like, you know, plus 300 strength or something at maximum. And the difference between plus 300 strength or like moving really, really fast is very, very big. Uh, you would rather you move really, really fast and then get 300 more attack. So we're gonna try and not care about crafting effects. Unfortunately, they do happen. Um, they do do something, I'll come back to that in a second. But basically, yes. So how do we actually do this? Well, the easy way uh, is very easy. All we wanna do is what something similar to what we did before, where we just put everything together. Um, so let's say we want um, faster boots, sneaking boots, heavy boots, and secret shoes. All in the same one. All we wanna do is you wanna make faster boots, then make sneaking boots, then make heavy boots. Uh, if we want, we can level all these up to level 10, um, but I'm not gonna bother with that right now. And then we put them all in the same thing, uh, in the last thing we wanted. So right now we're making the secret shoes, and now our secret shoes will have the abilities of all three of those things. Uh, we're gonna talk to Barrett to make sure. Please check my gear. And he will say that the secret shoes has fast step boots, sneaking boots, and heavy boots. So we have the effects of all three of them at the exact same time now, which is very, very good. So that's the easy way. Uh, there's a slightly more complicated way, which is this. Um, so there are basically two main reasons why you want to use the slightly more complicated and optimal way. And that is basically because, um, oops, my shields, or shoes. Uh, some of the really good shoes, especially later on, uh, don't have many slots. So like this fairy boots, uh, which is really, really good, only has one free slot uh, in its recipe. So we can't fit three different shoes, uh, which is obviously going to be quite a problem if we want to have three different effects. So basically what we have to do is we want to put everything in a piece in a shoe before that and then put it all in the end. Um, so let's say we like the effects of, um, what's nice? of sneaking boots. Let's say we like the effects of sneaking boots. So we're gonna make those. Let's say we might like the effects of snow boots. So we're gonna make snow boots and we're gonna put those sneaking boots in the snow boots. And then we're gonna try and make a rocket wing uh, with the snow boots. So the snow boots still have the sneaking boots inside them. Very sneaky. Um, so this way, the rocket wing should have the effects of those two before it. Um, this might not, be, might not be the case. Um, so we're gonna equip them, we're gonna talk to Barrett and make sure. Um, so there's a bit of luck here uh, because it might pick one of the materials instead. But we're gonna double check with Barrett. Yeah, and he'll say the snow boots, dragon fin, and fireworm scale are reason to make this. So this didn't really work out. Uh, so yeah, I would have saved before that and kept going. Uh, I would have reloaded if it didn't work, which it didn't work here. Uh, because we lost the effects of the speaking boots that we wanted, I think. Basically, yes. So what I would do eventually is if I wanted to make the fairy boots, I would put the um, rocket wings that I liked, which I'm wearing right now. Um, make shoes. Um, so I could put the fairy boots and I could put, actually let's put in those secret boots I put in before. Um, and this way the fairy boots should have the effects of the shoes I put in before, hopefully. Um, it's not guaranteed, again there's a bit of luck. But, yeah, this way, even though the fairy boots had only one sh slot, uh, we're gonna talk to Barrett, and he'll say that it looks like sneaking boots, faster boots, and heavy boots, where is he making this? So yeah, that's one example. Basically we got three different boot effects, plus the effects of the fairy shoes, even though the fairy shoes only had one slot. We just put everything in shoes before we put them in the fairy shoes at the end. Uh, so the real reason why this is important uh, beyond just the um, fact that it works if something has one slot is for the rarity bonuses. Uh, check the first video for that, but basically rarity is good. You want materials with high rarity uh, if you can. And shoes have zero rarity. So if you're putting in three shoes, each of them with zero rarity, you're actually missing out on quite a lot of rarity you could put on anyways. So even if you did have the freedom uh, to put them in directly, this optimal way is still better because you can increase your rarity if you do want that extra bit of defense. But anyway, okay, so 
Uh, that is how you craft these shoes. But the question in is, which shoes do you actually want to use? Uh, which ones are the good ones? Uh, there are actually 22 different shoes in this game, uh, 15 of which have unique effects. So 10 of them are just stats, uh, but 15 of them have weird effects. Uh, I'm going to go through every uh, one of those 15 shoes. Um, I was going to just do the best ones, but it seemed that no one actually did a list of all of them. So I want to do that here. I don't go through them in order from of crafting skill from lowest to highest. So we're going to go through the stuff you can make first, all the way to the stuff you can make at the end of the game. I'm going to rate their abilities as good, so they have some like objectively good benefit. Um, some that are utility, so some that like might be useful from place to place and might be nice to have in your backpack. Uh, cosmetic, uh, no real effect, it just looks nice or sounds nice. Or bad, which is something that you don't want. Um, usually those things have good stats, but bad abilities to offset that. But yeah, so we're going to completely ignore stats in this summary. Uh, we'll talk about stats towards the end. Um, but for now, we're just going to look at the abilities. So, uh, first up, the item with the lowest crafting skill in the game, sorry, the shoe with the lowest crafting skill at an effect in the game is the free farming shoes which takes crafting still at 8 and lets you ignore the grid when you're farming. Now what this means is basically if I want to use my hoe normally, um, it wants to hoe within the grid, uh, within this normal, within each of these squares it wants to put 4. If I use the free farming shoes, um, I can till the soil wherever I want, I don't need to follow the grid. Uh, which is pretty ugly for the most part, but it's actually really really good uh, at the end of it all. Uh, so I did a video on this, I think, two days ago now, um, where I explained some science as well. Uh, but basically, with some thing, with a technique that we call close packing, uh, you can actually put more uh, crops in a smaller area, which I did here. Ambulance. Um, so in the top, we have like the normal grid. We have eight things in these two big squares. In the bottom, I used this sort of close packing technique and I was able to fit 5, 4, 5, so that's 14. Um, I was able to fit 14 um, plants in the same amount of area, so it went from 8 all the way to 14. Uh, I can't do the exact same thing, so above it it'll have to be 4, 5, 4, so overall that becomes 27 uh, over 16, which is about 70%. Um, it hurt my soul to make this fun fail, <laughs> that's 69%. But yeah, so it's 68.75% more efficient in this, which is very, very good. Uh, check that video for more details on how you actually do this. But yeah, um, free farming shoes are very, very good for farming, an incredibly good utility. And they're the first boots you get. Uh, next one is P.O. Sandals. Um, actually, I'm going to kick away this guy. We don't need it anymore. So P.O. Sandals, uh, I'm going to equip them now, uh, has that annoying squeak sound. That's it. Uh, Prilly Cosmetic doesn't do anything. Next up are our secret shoes. Uh, secret shoes make you taller. As well the description says, and it actually does that. Uh, I have equipped right now. Uh, I'm gonna equip them. Uh, so it's easier to see here uh, because we have this nice grid. Um, okay. So you can see my stand. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's here. So you can see the top of my head um, is like follows that horizontal line, right? Now if I put on the secret shoes. I put on the secret shoes. I go above the line. My character is slightly taller. Let me show you if it's gone. And now it's gone. And now my hey hat is in line. And now it's on. And now my hat is slightly taller. That's all it does. Uh, I'm not sure if it actually changes like your hitbox or anything. I uh, assume so if it does, it might be a bad thing. But for the most part, it's just cosmetic. It just changes the way you look very subtly. I think it's pretty funny though. So I quite like it. Uh, heavy Boots is another one, so Heavy Boots is the next one, crafting skill 20, and what this does is it makes you resistant to environmental winds. Uh, basically in one or two areas of the game, um, there's like a weak wind blowing uh, that just slowly blows you away. Uh, heavy Boots lets you resist that. Um, this is a very, very, very minor effect, <laughs> almost unnoticeable. Um, because, so in a few areas of the game there's like really strong winds that are like, don't go here. Heavy Boots don't help you with that. Uh, heavy Boots are completely useless there. Uh, early on, there are some enemies that have wind attacks that just try and blow you away. This also ignores that. Uh, this also do doesn't have anything to do with that. So this is only useful in like two areas of the game where there's like a very weak wind. 
it's not worth it. Um, but yeah, technically it does have a use, so I classified it under utility. Okay, next one are wet boosts. Uh, wet boots, which make you occasionally trip. Uh, these ones have good stats, but yeah, so bad um, ability. Um, yeah, there you can see. I just like this face plant on the ground. Like my best Shao Pai impersonation, I guess. I still feel bad about the other video where I just ignored her. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it just makes you occasionally trip. Uh, the chances are relatively low, but it's enough to be annoying. Um, like, yeah, so I just tripped, but it'll be a while before I trip again. So it's not too bad. It's fats are nice, so early game, it's, you, you could wear it, but overall you really, really don't want to use this. Okay, next up are sneaking boots. Um, so I'm going to go down and let's unequip my shoes. So basically when, when I walk in here, you can see a bunch of exclamation marks as the enemies see me. And when they see me, they're going to start attacking me. So the moment I walked in, like, the orc and the woolly saw me. And then they'll try and attack me. So all of them saw me and they just attacked me instantly. What sneaking boots do is they make it harder for enemies to see you. Um, they'll see me eventually. So right now they, they aren't noticing me, they aren't attacking me. But when I get closer, they will. So they'll still see you, it just decreases the range. Um, so right now they can't see me. The moment I take off these shoes, Okay, still not yet, in case they aren't looking. Uh, I think you need to move actually slightly. But yeah, so here they, they're all seeing me. If I put on the sneaking boots, they aren't again. Ooh. Um, it's not bad. Uh, it's nice if you're trying to get from place to place and you don't have like a rosary or something uh, to avoid enemy attacks. Uh, it doesn't work on bosses, so it's not the best, but it's something. Um, but yeah, so it's technically still like a positive benefit. Uh, the next boots we're going to talk about are the fast step boots, and these are really interesting. Um, so these improve your dash distance, so dash being a thing you get when you press the shoulder button and you just dash forward. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to try and dash to the next room. So I'll do it once, two, three, four, five, and six. So it takes me six dashes to get to that next area. Now if instead of that, I swap to the fast step boots, um, it'll take me one, two, three, four dashes. Uh, yeah, so it makes you dash a longer distance. Um, this is very nice for a few different reasons. Um, it's nice a lot if you're like using charge attacks a lot. So when you charge and you walk slower, um, but you can't, uh, but you can't dash at a normal speed. So you can just like weave in and out a bit better and stuff like that. So that's pretty nice. Um, fast fat boots are pretty good. Uh, the next one are the snow boots, which stop you from slipping on ice. Uh, this is like the, um, the anti-wind ones, which are pretty pointless. In like two areas of the game, there's like these like ice planes, and you can slip and slide a bit. Uh, it's all it does, it just stops you from slipping in like those two areas. It's not really worth it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend these, but technically they do have fair use. Uh, next are Strider Boots. Uh, so this is really hard to show. I haven't figured out a good way to show this, but basically um, when you dash, normally you get a few frames of invincibility. You're invulnerable to attacks for a while. Uh, people call that iframes in a lot of other games. And what Strider Boots do is they just increase those iframes. Um, it's not very practical in this game. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it. Uh, basically just because in this game, for the most part, you're going to try and stay out of enemies' ranges rather than trying to, like, dodge through it. Uh, so because of that, I would much stronger, strongly recommend the Fast Step Boots. You could use both, but yeah, Strider Boots aren't too good just because you aren't going to be using their invincibility very much. Uh, the last of the dashing ones are the Step In Boots. Uh, so these are pretty cool. So normally, you can know you can do dash attacks. So if I dash, I like move forward and I attack. Uh, and these dash attacks, depending on your weapon, are either really good or really bad. Uh, so the long sword one is really, really bad. Um, so I can do my dash attack and I am like vulnerable for a long time. So right now I'm trying to, uh, right after I do my dash attack, I'm just trying to mash my dodge button. You can see how long it takes me before I can actually dash out of the way. Uh, in that time, I can be killed, I can be attacked so many times, and it's very, very dangerous. Uh, what Steppen Boots do is they make you just not do your dash attack. So I can attack and just dash away. Uh, and it's so good. Uh, it's so good depending on what you want to use. Um, for a long sword, it's so good just because, again, the dash attack is really bad. 
uh, for something like spears, which have good dash attacks, it's useless. Um, spear dash attacks are, are fine, so uh, Sever Boots are pretty useless for that. I think its best use is for the Longsword or also for the Staff, um, because uh, when you're Staffing, you're going to use your charge attacks a lot. Because you're charging a lot, you're going to dash a lot, and basically when you, um, when you do... Um, you can't use unleash a charge attack during your uh, dash animation. So basically I mean that... So you can see that I'm doing the charge, but the charge is just going away because I'm in my dash attack animation. I sort of like need to wait for the animation to finish, which means I can't use my early charge attacks. So like, if I like this first charge attack, uh, which comes up very, very quickly, if I accidentally dash attack, the attack just disappears. Like I just don't use the attack. I just can't use the attack if I dash. But if I use my stepping boots, I can go in and just use it straight away. Go in and use my early charge attack. Yeah, uh, which I think is quite nice. Yeah, so I dashed, yeah, that was a perfect example. So I dashed in, I used my attack before he hit me. If I didn't have step in boots, I would have used my normal dash attack, uh, which wouldn't have been able to actually use this electric laser. So yeah, so step in boots are really nice for longsword and for staff, but probably not so nice for other ones. But I would still call them good. Maybe I'm just biased for those two weapons. Uh, next one are Ghost Boots. So Ghost Boots increase your move speed slightly. So you can see how I've normally walked this game so far. If I use Ghost Boots, whoosh, I'm a decent bit faster. Um, I did some brief tests, I'll go through that later on. Uh, there are a few items that change your move speed. But yeah, so Ghost Boots make you slightly faster. So here I am with Ghost Boots, and here I am without Ghost Boots. It's a pretty noticeable difference. Oh uh, yeah, so Iron Gethard decreases move speed slightly. Um, here I am with them now. Yep. Uh, it's very, very minor. Um, a very small amount. It's a, it, it is slower, but it's very, very minor. I'm going to remove it again. And yeah. Um, I think it's still some utility. Uh, basically, if you are trying to use free farming boots, uh, it, being able to just move smaller distances is very convenient. Um, just if you want to like make sure everything is as tightly packed as possible, Iron Getter can be useful, so I call it utility. It's not going to be useful in most situations, but it's useful in some. Okay, water shoes. So water shoes allow you to walk on water, um, which is quite nice. So um, I'm going to equip them now. And if we go to the Dragon Lake, um, or just even here. Oh wait, no, not here. Okay, so it depends only on some areas. Uh, but here, uh, in the Dragon Lake, I can walk on the water. Uh, which can help me like see fish further on and stuff like that. Uh, it also lets me unlock areas, like particular areas you can only access if you have water shoes. So you definitely need some. Um, of course, if I am on water and I unequip them, I'm just like stuck, I can't move. I need to put them on or I can escape out. But yeah, so water shoes have a very good utility. Uh, it also has some combat use, like some arenas, like some areas where you might fight enemies might have water inside them. So being able to just be, have a more open arena, being able to walk on water can be very convenient for some fights. But yeah, uh, ice skates. So ice skates let you slide slightly. Um, so normally you can see like if I stop moving, I just instantly stop moving. If I use ice skates, uh, when I stop moving, I like slide a bit. Very small amount, uh, but enough to be like slightly annoying. Um, oddly enough, we before we spoke about these snowshoes that stop you from sliding um, on ice. If you use snowshoes and ice skates together, you still slide from the ice skates. You just don't slide from normal ice. So yeah, snow boots are pretty useless. They don't even counteract the ice skates. But yeah, so again, this is a bad thing you want to avoid. Uh, don't use ice skates for the ability. And finally, Lucky Lost are the Rocket Wings, and Rocket Wings are amazing. Uh, they make you so fast. Uh, they make you even faster than the Rocket, sorry, than the Ghost Boots make you do. So yeah, uh, Rocket Wing is probably the best ability in the game, just because being able to move fast is so good to like dodge attacks, or to just even get from place to place faster. Uh, but yeah, so those are all of the shoes. Um, regarding Moose Speed though, I did a quick study. Basically, I just teleported back to my place. And then walked from here all the way to a place called Maya Road. If you've been there, you've been there. Um, I made sure there were no encounters. And without any other equipment, it took me about 60 seconds to get from 
the bed to my road. Uh, with the Iron Getter, so the one that slows you down, it took me 62 seconds. Uh, so very minor amounts slower, uh, hardly noticeable. Uh, but with Ghost Shoes, it took me 53 seconds, which is quite a lot more. Uh, with Rocket Wing, it even went to 43 seconds, so it was hugely faster. Um, yeah, especially considering the fact like loading screens are going to be like a constant for the most part, so that's a huge speed difference, which is incredibly useful if you're trying to like fight a boss or something and avoid their attacks, like trying to outrun their attacks. Of course, since we can put multiple abilities together, we can put Rocket, uh, Rocket Wing and Ghost Shoes together and go super, super fast. And we have this other equipment called uh, Anit's uh, Necklace, which is an accessory. I'll talk about this in the next video, but if I use the um, if I use them both together along with Anit's ring, Anit's necklace, uh, I can go like stupidly fast. Uh, here I am. Whoosh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, movement speed is very very nice just to get from place to place, and if I do that, it takes 37 seconds to get from my place to the Maya Road, all the way down from 60. Uh, that's insanely good. Um, but yeah, so with that in mind, uh, quick summary of those abilities. So we have some good ones. So the movement speed, like the huge movement speed buff from Rocket Wing. The small movement speed buff from the Ghost Shoes. Uh, the increased dash distance from the... which one was it? The Fast Step Boots. The ability to avoid dash attacks from the Step in Boots, especially if you're using a long sword or a Staff. Uh, the high... the ability to not be seen by monsters from a distance using the sneak skin boots and the increased dash ability from the um, strider boots. Uh, this is roughly in like how good I think they are. So the movement speed is the best one. Dash and ability is the worst. And then we have some utility uh, shoes. So we have free farming shoes, uh, which lets you farm more compactly and put in more crops in your farm. Then we have water walking, which lets you walk on water, access areas, fish better. Uh, we have movement speed minus um, from the iron getter, which helps you use your farm a bit better. And then we have the no ice slip and the heavy boots, which let you avoid environmental wind, which technically have a use, but are very, very minor, so I wouldn't really bother with them. Um, basically, this does mean that I would recommend a few different shoes at the same time. Like, I would recommend you use one just for combat, uh, maybe one for water walking when you need it, and one with free farming. Uh, so I'll summarize that here. Uh, oh, yes, but sorry, before we get there, um, do keep in mind that you can use the stats of one pair of shoes. And the stats are relatively important for the most part. Um, or you can just use four different abilities. So you can use like three abilities and one thing with good stats, or just four abilities, uh, depending on how much you value those extra abilities. So Fairy Boots uh, is perhaps the most automatic decision. Um, if I go to the shoes, so Fairy Boots is the second highest crafting one, which has the highest defense and magic defense of all of the shoes in the game, and also gives you really nice status resistances, uh, which is very, very good, because statuses are bad. Uh, the second best one, oddly enough, are those Peo Sandals, um, because they give you like love resistance, and love resistance is very, very hard to get. Uh, but not only that, it gives you dizzy resistance, uh, which is good to avoid getting becoming dizzy. And it also gives you dizzy attack, so it actually improves your offensive stats. The problem, in quotation marks, is the annoying like squeak, but I've like heard people on Game Facts talk about how they love PO sandals. So I don't know. Maybe you maybe one of those people and you like PO sandals as sound, in which case go for it. Uh, other ones with good stats are the wet boots, which gives plus 75% critical, which is insanely good. Uh, the problem is that the slip is very, very bad, and there's no way to avoid it, so I wouldn't recommend this. Uh, for a compromise, you can use the sneaking boots, which has a positive effect, so this is the one that stops enemies from seeing you from far away, but still gives you 30% crit resistance, which is very, very good. So yeah, um, one of, like some of these are still very nice to use as your base, and then you can do your other abilities on top of that. So with that in mind, these are the actual recommendations that I have. I have. So for combat, um, basically for the first and second slots, I would strongly recommend your move speed. Rocket Wing for sure, maybe go shoes if you want to be that much more fast. After that, um, for your other abilities, I would recommend either the Fast Step Boots or the Step In Boots. So the Fast Step Boots is the one that lets you dash. 
And the step in boots is the one that lets you um, not use your dash attacks. As for the base, you can try and use the other one um, if you just want all of your abilities. Or you can use some of the ones with stats. So uh, the strut, you can use one of the ones with stats, like the swing boots, the fairy boots, or the PO sandals. Or you can use the strider boots if you just really want that invincibility frames, which is still viable. So yeah, so this is your probably like your combat set or your one just for moving around. Um, you can also use water shoes. Uh, you can put the water shoes in the previous one as well, um, just because um, it'll be convenient in some locations, or you can just have a second one. Uh, if you're using water shoes, I think there's a good chance you're going to be fishing, and if you're going to be fishing, I'd recommend fast step boots uh, for one obvious reason of the fact that you'll be dashing a lot if you're fishing. Um, do I have my fishing rod equipped? Yeah. Uh, because, like I said before, you're going to be a bit slower uh, when you're charging attack, so you can just dash in and out. So I can just dash in, walk onto the water if I could, and then fish out that way. So yeah, faster boots is nice for mobility if you're using charge attacks a lot, as we said, which you'll be doing if you're fishing. Uh, and my final recommendation is to make some free farming boots with the Iron Getter, just to make a nice farm uh, that is very compact. Um, again, check that video if you haven't yet. Uh, I'm very proud of that one. But yeah, so with that in mind, I think that is the end of this video. So in summary, you can make shoes with up to four bonus abilities. So one from the base and three from putting their abilities in when you're crafting. Uh, yeah, and you do that by, by putting them in when you're crafting. Um, we spoke about how movement speed is really, really good, both just from getting from place to place and also for combat to dodge attacks. And finally, we spoke about how free farming shoes and water shoes have very nice niches, um, whether it's farming more compactly or get from place to place. And it might be good idea to have extra ones for those in your backpack or in your farm closet. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's basically going to be this video. Uh, next one will be on accessories. Uh, and yeah, that will be exciting, and I hope you all are looking forward to that. As always, I thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm getting some really great feedback. People seem to really like this series, uh, and I'm very glad you're all enjoying it. And I hope that you continue to enjoy the next few. Thank you all for watching. This has been Suntide, and I'll see you all next time, hopefully. Bye.